Stacey Hoskins, Planning Manager, Michelle McConnell, Project Planner from Long Range Planning. And for the commissioners, I have a handout for you about these grant proposals, which we're finalists for. Do you have copies? Yeah, extras. I'll hand them out. I got extras. You want to get them? I got them. Can I hear you? Given, given the interest, we'll take as long as we need. Okay. Well, good afternoon, commissioners. I'm glad to be here, and uh, I'm glad to be able to brief you on this this uh, this grant that we're a finalist for. And um, I guess to start you off, I would take you to the last page of this handout and do a little cartoon I drew this morning. And I'll start at the left. We are talking about federal money, and this is public money, very important, and I'm really glad to see all these people here who are very concerned about the public money. Um, as part of that federal money, there's, there's this uh, EPA process, Region 10, uh, supporting the Puget Sound Partnership, and there's $10 million available for these watershed uh, management assistant grants. Uh, three counties in our local region always see these grants. Kitsap County, Jefferson County, and Clallam County. In fact, Jefferson County not only received uh, a grant, uh, basically congratulations, you're a finalist for this grant, uh, not only on our Watershed Resource Center, but also uh, in partnership with Clallam County in their shoreline uh, update and their no net loss, uh, no net loss in the so, um, these are very important, and for lots of reasons, they're very important for us particularly. Um, this continues the process. This coaching model that we call it uh, basically um, evolved out of um, the critical areas process in March of 2008. That was our adoption. But in the summer prior to that, as we were working through the planning commission, um, Jim, Norm, Denny, Jill, Amy. Al Latham, Annie McMillan from Ecology. As, as we led up to adoption, this whole regulatory scheme of 
you know, DCD, we, you apply for a permit, we review it, we take you to a permit uh, decision. And a lot of the people at the table at that time, which a lot, a lot of them are still in this room today, kept talking about how can we help the people? How can we help the citizens through this process? How can we coach them? And at that time in 2008, um, we, we discussed it and basically break up groups. I did WSU, down in Brennan, Fire Hall. Perhaps WSU could provide that support, coach the citizens through the permit process. Maybe how, how we could burden out them with that to the conservation district. Obviously DCD or maybe on ecology. At that point, Andy McMillan, essentially from ecology, said, because we're doing wetland science and update in that category of critical areas, that perhaps ecology may be able to find a funding source, which uh, at that particular time did not occur. Um, we carried this forward. Um, yes, Joe Silver was involved, Amy was involved, Sam Gibbony was involved. Joe apparently um, had been working on this concept previously. I wasn't aware of that experience on her part, but the coaching model came up through, in my experience, through the critical area update process and um, basically led to the application to the EPA for funding for a watershed resource center. Um, last year we applied, we were not successful in getting that award. This year we, we are successful and if we need to finalize uh, the work plan and the budget and uh, we would anticipate uh, starting out with this model uh, within DCD on July 1st for a period of three years. Essentially, you know, as projects come into D DCD, so I, I drew the box down at the bottom for you. The permit center is the front. It's, it's still there. The resource center would be added on the left. We got one person out front, so we have plenty of room. We'd add these resource people, like planner of the day services, computer workstations, more proactive in the, in the loop of continuous improvement rather than getting to the end and saying, good luck, bring in a permit, we'll look at it. We're going to say when they have questions, can you sit down and work with us? Can you help me fill it out? We'll have a stormwater engineer available on call to help you with the requirements of the uh, stormwater regulations. We'll have planner of the days available that you can actually sit down and, and coach you through the uh, mapping <coughs> systems, the critical area maps, the, the codes. We'll try to um, rewrite some of our codes into simpler checklists and simpler um, you know, handouts that are a little more friendly. Um, we hear that from the citizens a lot. I think this, this model validates a lot of the citizen comment we've had, which is how can you, how can you help me? Um, can you make it simpler? Can you just give me a checklist? Um, how do you know that it works? Um, in the CAO process, we talked about the CAS was a very significant issue of critical area stewardship plan. Stewardship was a very key word uh, at that time, and we moved that into the critical areas ordinance that a citizen or an applicant or a property owner that wanted to work their land and, and perhaps work in the critical area buffer or, or do some more creative, you know, on, on the ground work stewardship. Mm -hmm.